Rich family at all of our campuses. Thank you guys for being here, those joining us online. Thank you as well. Interact with us right from your own home. My name is Andy Tilly, and I am so excited to be with you guys for week number two of a series called Nothing Off Limits. This is a series like none other because you literally control it, whether you're in New York, Florida, Texas, Nashville, all across the place. The questions that you guys submit is exactly where we are going to go in this series because we believe uh, that there should be no limits to the things that we're going to talk about when it comes to church. We believe that God's word provides the answers. You can go ahead and start texting questions in to 22333 and then type I wonder in the message and then type a space and then you can put in your question. Last week, over 2,500 questions came in in like 30 minutes. So there's a lot of questions that came in that we're going to just dive into the some that are coming in right now tonight. So go ahead and text those in and we'll keep going. The first question that I'm going to try to address, oh great, <laughs> the first question I'm going to try to address is this one. Um, is sexting okay? Whew. Is sexting okay? That, that's a pretty great question. Last week we asked you guys to text in if you thought it was okay, if you had done it or not done it, and 50 plus percent of y'all are some nasty players, all right? You say, yes, I have done it or I have participated in it. Here's the deal. Let's just look at this thing, all right? I mean, can you really think that that's the best decision that we can possibly make with our lives and what we do? Here's what you have to know from just a factual standpoint. Those pictures are out there forever. And girls, let me just tell you a guy's secret. They like to share pictures of women with other guys, right? So don't sit there and think that, oh, it's just my boyfriend. He would never, he would never until you dump him and then he's right into the game, all right? So you guys got to understand that. You don't know where these pictures are going to end up. And many a times they end up in the wrong places, in the wrong hands. And so what we have to do is be very, very cautious of that. Girls do not buy into the lie. Don't think that, man, if I give him this, then he won't want some of this. Or if you just, you know, do what he asks you to do, then he'll like you even more. He's out there using you to grab things from you. What would scripture say? Ephesians 5, 3 said there should not even be a hint of sexual immorality. And let's just be honest because we're at Life Church. We say things that are as honest as they get. When you take a picture of your junk and send it to somebody else, that's more than a hint of sexual immorality, all right? I'm just going to throw that out there for you. Moving on, let's see what else people have in here today. Good questions that keep coming in? Okay. This is a, a hugely asked question. Any city that I go to, um, it gets asked over and over again uh, because the culture is teaching us one thing, God's word teaches us something radically different. Here's a sensitive subject. It says, it goes out like this, what does God say about homosexuality or is being gay okay? I'm going to handle this with extreme responsibility and uh, with, with, with some sensitivity as well because I know this is a huge subject for a lot of people that are watching from all over our campuses and even some of those online. Uh, this is what scripture says. This is what scripture says about homosexuality. If you look in Leviticus 18.22, that's in the Old Testament, it says, do not practice homosexuality. It says, having sex with another man as with a woman, it's a detestable sin. It's a sin. So the Old Testament is very clear that having a homosexual relationship is a sin, which is disobedience from God's word. Many will go, well, that's Old Testament. What about New Testament and the new covenant or agreement that God has made with his people through his son, Jesus? Well, it goes down like this in Romans 1, 24 and 27. It says, therefore, God gave them over in their sinful desires and their sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. In verse 27, it says, In the same way, men also abandoned uh, natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. I got a mic now? All right. So they're inflamed with lust for one another. So, as, as sensibly as I can tell us, as we look into Scripture... And we listen to what it has to say to it. There is no question, Old Testament or New Testament, that that is a sin. That it's sin. That it's disobedience from God's word. And I say that and I know that right now people are mad at me and 
I know that people don't understand, and I know that there are some people who are saddened by that. I've even, I've even talked at places where people have literally gotten up and left. Because when we hear God's truth and we're confronted with it, it does something within us, doesn't it? It, it starts to mess with us, and there's people out there that, man, you're hurt, and you're going, that, that's not true. And there's other people of you that are going, man, I, I'm just kind of struggling through this thing. There's, there's others of you that, man, this has been a struggle for your lifetime. There's others that it's just kind of there, and you're, you're hurt, and you're confused. And then all of a sudden, you're confronted with truth, and it's sin, and it's disobedience from God's word. It kind of gets people to thinking of this question. Why does God hate gay people so much? Can I just tell you this? And if this is where you find yourself, and maybe it's been a long, long time struggle. Maybe this is a struggle that you don't even want, but you just found into your life. Understand this. God doesn't hate gay people. God doesn't hate gay people. Listen to me. God loves you. He hates the sin. He hates the sin that comes with it. And this is how much God loves you, is that he puts into his word the righteous ways that we should live. Why? Because he wants to protect us. And he knows that disobedience from his word leads to death and destruction. And because he loves you so much, he puts in there how to live so that you can keep a life that he has called you to. So it's not about God getting down upon you. It's about God saying, look, I know something. I made, created, and designed you. And when you live in this fashion and form, then guess what? It leads to death and destruction. And I love you so much. I want to tell you that and show you that. I think a great question, too, that there's thousands of us watching right now. I think a great question we need to ask ourselves is this. How is we, as the church, how should we respond to it? Because I know there's a lot of jokes that get thrown out and a lot of feelings get hurt. And I know there's hundreds and hundreds that are struggling through this. And you've got a boyfriend or a girlfriend and nobody else knows about it. And it's a struggle for you. But how, how does the church handle it? How, how should the people next to you and around you, no matter what campus you find yourself at, how do they handle it? My question, I think, is the same way that Jesus would handle sexual sin. You remember uh, the story back in John chapter 8? There was this woman who was literally caught in the middle of this adulterous affair. In other words, she was having sex with somebody else's husband. They bring her out, and they bring her out into this middle courtyard, and then all of a sudden they are about to stone her. And Jesus comes in, and he says, those of you who have no sin, then you throw the first stone. And all of them backed up, and they were gone. And Jesus looked at her and said, go and sin no more. In other words, turn from your ways and keep walking forward. And that's exactly the way that the church, we need to handle it. Just like any other struggle that people are going through. I love how we divide up sin like this sin's worse than this sin and this and that. And, and all of a sudden, here's the thing. As the church, if that's what your struggle is, hey, the person next to you has another struggle as well. And we're there to help you through it with love and through God's truth and to hold you accountable to that. And that's what I think scripture speaks into that as well. Moving on to the next question. Thank you for all these heavy questions. I'm already sweating if you cannot see it, all right? Next question is this. Um, how do I get the girl next to me? <laughs> you just slide on close over, say, hey, baby, you enjoying this? That's from me. That's from me, baby, because I loved you. You read mine. Seriously, if you are texting me, like a person who has no game and saying, how do I pick up this girl? You are just out of luck. And why are you texting somebody at church saying, I don't know. The chances are if you're texting it in, you have no chance. There's honesty. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, I said it. And you know I'm right. It's like when people text in and go, how do I get a girlfriend? You don't. Trust me, all right? There we go. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. All right, here we go. Next question, it goes down like this. Why do y'all do this to me? Is it okay to look at porn, or is porn okay? Let's ask ourselves a question. Get out your cell phones. Don't give me the church answer. Give me what real life, what you think, how you feel. We're going to text to 22333. Let's go ahead and put that poll up. If you believe that viewing pornography as a teenager is the norm, like everybody's doing it, jump in. Then put the norm in the text. If you're going, nope, it's not okay, put not okay. And if you go, Andy, it's no big deal. Everybody's doing it. It really doesn't matter. Go ahead and text that in. 
A lot of people thinking that it's, it's not okay. That's not okay. There's hypocrisy in the church if you haven't found out. That means there's liars up in here. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and take that down. Well, while we know what the church answer is, here is the reality of it all. Uh, the facts are is that most of you guys were exposed to pornography in one setting or another at age around 11 years old. And by the ages of really 8 to 16, 90% of you guys have seen pornography in a lot of different ways, many times uh, more than you probably should. Uh, my, my warning to this sensitive subject is, is this right here, is that many students that are listening to my voice and you can hear me right now, uh, here, here's what's happened. Uh, you're engaging in something right now that can ultimately wreck and ruin your marriage. And, and what I say to that is like right now at 12, 13, 14, 15, you're engaging and it's fun, it's exciting, it's experimental, and you're going after it. But then pretty soon that experimenting becomes the addiction, which then starts to run your life in a lot of different areas and ways. And then you get married and you think all of a sudden you're going to stop and it's going to be okay, and then it's not. And then what happens? There are marriages all around you that are getting ruined and wrecked over this, over something that started 10 years ago. So I speak into the subject saying, listen to me when I say this. It's not just a little big issue. This is a huge thing that is going on. I want to start off by addressing it in this manner, that the battle for sexual purity in your life starts long before the physical one ever does. Because now we're getting a little bit deeper into our issues, all right? Now we're really talking about hard things. And what I want you to understand is there's a lot of people that have this idea about pornography that as long as I'm doing that, I'm not hurting anybody. So what does it really matter? I'm going to keep doing it because that's what I want to selfishly do. And so I'm going to engage in that. And, and you have to understand that purity in your heart and in your life and in your mind start long before the physical one actually starts. I've never met people engaging in sexual activity in a big way that haven't been viewing stuff. Why? Because they have to keep viewing it, keep viewing it, and then it keeps progressing more often. But what does scripture have to say about it? That may be what happens in life. We may have the church answer, but what does scripture speak into it? Well, I think if you go all the way back into the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 20, you have the Ten Commandments. You remember those? Moses brought those down. And one of those commands was, you shall not commit adultery. Adultery is having sex with somebody who is not your spouse. Now, here's where it gets good. You say, well, I'm not doing that. And what does porn have to do with that? Glad you asked me. Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 says it this way. You've heard it said, do not commit adultery. But he says, I tell you, anyone who looks a woman lustfully or a man has already committed adultery within their own hearts. In other words, if you and I are going to be the sexual pure person that God has called us to be, it's not about not doing something. It's about doing the right things. It's about protecting that which matters most. And why he says that if you've lusted after into your heart, there's already sin that's happened and we've crossed over the line because this is a big deal. Because what we feed our minds and what we feed our hearts ultimately comes out into the actions that we do of our life. This isn't just me. This is scripture. Uh, Luke 6, 45. It says, a good man brings out the good things stored in him, up in his heart. And an evil man brings out the evil things that are stored up in his heart. And so why it's important is because what you're putting into your life and your mind is not only sinful Man, it, it, it's just corrupting, and it's, it's not what God's got for you, and it's not the best. And as I kind of speak on this, I want to be really honest with you. I know that there are probably a thousand plus or more that are really struggling with this. And I want to look at you and say, God loves you. He hates you this sin, but he loves you, and he hasn't given up on you, because I know there's going to be a lot of shame, there's going to be a lot of guilt, some of you have been doing it for so long, you're past the shame and guilt, you're just so numb to it all, but for many people that are engaged, they're going, I know I shouldn't, but I can't, and here's what I want to do today, is I want to try to give you some resources to actually try to help you, because you don't have to live that way at all. Now, the first thing that you can do is you can get an accountability partner. Uh, somebody to talk through and just say, hey, this is what's going on in my life. I need some help. You would be amazed. If you think you're the only one that struggles, you're crazy. You're absolutely, if you're a girl and you're going, that's not a girl issue, that's not true. 
Matter of fact, around 40% of the people who go to porn sites are women. So it's not just a guy issue anymore. And I promise you, if you got into a circle with people and were honest with each other, you'd find that you're not much different and your struggle's not much different than theirs next to you. But everybody wants to hide it and not talk about it. So you can get accountability. Another thing that you can do is get involved into a life group. Get plugged in with a body of people that can be praying for you and encouraging you. Other people need to get software put on your computers and and do the things that you need to do to protect yourself because you know if you have the option and the availability to do it, that you're just going to go do it because you can't physically stop. And for other people, here's a radical idea. This is unbelievably radical. Talk to your parents about it. I, I know people joke and you laugh and you think I'm crazy, but let me tell you something. When you engage in this conversation with your parents, I promise you it will be different than what you think. And I know that most are going, no way, I ain't telling my parents nothing. I understand that, but here's the thing. I, I want to introduce you to a kid that I did an interview with because he finally took my advice one day. His name is Cameron, and this is what he had to say about telling his parents and what happened. My question for you would be, what kind of encouragement or what would you tell them Um, that I couldn't from somebody their age to say, hey, this is a good idea. This is something that might work. Well, I mean, it's one of the hardest decisions, but it is one of the best because I would honestly start with just a small group that you can truly be accountable with because that's where it started for me in our small group. It was just a tight group of friends, and so they kind of hold you accountable. We deleted the Safari off my phone, put a password that I tried to find out like 40 times but always (laughs) failed. But Never won. (laughs) Um... And so just, I would start there and then, I mean, I know I sound crazy because I was in the same position you were when people said something like this, I'd be like, okay, he's talking to him and her, not me, because I can't do that stuff. But I mean, it truly is a life-changing decision. And I mean, I'm closer with God and my earthly father now that I'd done that. And so I would truly suggest that maybe even on the car ride home, just bring it up. How would you bring it up on the car ride home? Well, sit in the back seat. <laughs> no, but I mean, I guess you can if you want. But I mean, I just said, okay, Dad, you understand that I'm not perfect. I understand I'm not perfect. And I just feel like there's some things going on in my life that I don't even know if you know about. And so I truly want to just let you know everything about me so that way I feel like we can get closer. And that's actually how it happened. I thought it was just a good speech, but it actually <laughs> happened that way. We did get a lot closer. It was uh, an awesome interview. In fact, if you want to see the full entire seven minutes of how it went down, um, he talks in detail about kind of how, the, how it was awkward, whatever else, and, and how it ended up. It was unbelievable. Uh, Cameron's a hilarious kid. I said, how, how's that communication going with your parents now? And he said, Andy, can I just tell you that the communication has never been better? And I said, why is that? And he said, well, when you tell your dad that you masturbate and look at porn, it's pretty much you can tell him anything. <laughs> and I said, that's true. There's not much more than that. So thank you very much for that, Cameron. So talking to your parents about it, trust me, it changes things. His communication is wide open. Why? Because they can talk about anything. All right. Another great resource uh, for you might be is, is reading materials such as Every Man's Battle, Every Young Man's Battle. You have youth leaders at every single campus that you are not going to surprise them. You're not going to, to be like, oh, shamed by them. You've got pastors all around who want to help, who want to say, you know what, that's okay. We can get through this thing. Understand that I know there's a lot of guilt and shame involved in this and what you're doing, and you're just trying to move and maybe get out, but it's exciting at the same time. But no, according to Scripture, man, we're, we're supposed to keep our minds and our hearts clean and pure before Him because our purity starts long before the physical stuff that we're facing come into play. Understand this. If you're feeling hopeless and you're feeling like, man, it's just too far gone, or my parents will freak out, I'm in so much trouble. I understand, no, you're not. God loves you, and you are an overcomer. Don't buy into this stuff. You are made and created for victory. God has a huge plan for your life. And not only that, you look through scriptures in 1 Corinthians, it says there's no temptation that sees you, all right? That's not common to man. You can find, and God will deliver you a way out in no matter what your situation is in. Keep on fighting for purity, the things that matter. Let's move on to perhaps maybe our final question. Oh, this is, this is good. This one goes hand in hand. Is masturbation wrong? <laughs> you guys are on a roll tonight. 
Can I just tell you that? Like I'm sweating through my shirt up here. We're in church on a Wednesday night. So far, we've talked about sexting, homosexuality, porn, now it's masturbation. What are you doing to me? <sighs> a new study just came out. It said 90% of males masturbate and the other 10% lie. <laughs> I'm trying to break the ice here, people. Get your hands out of your pockets. Here's where we're going. Here's where we're going. The true percentage is this, 90% of males, 60% of females. So you're not alone. What does scripture say? Scripture will speak into this about masturbation. Genesis 3.3, 3, and you must not touch it or you will die. <laughs> Can I not just break this up a little bit? Ah. All right. <laughs> All right. Save the phone calls and emails. All right, I'm getting there. Here's what I'm going to say. Scripture uh, doesn't really speak into this subject so much, but I believe that it does in a lot of other ways. Remember that, remember that our purity starts long before the, the uh, physical stuff. So in our mind, things get going. And I know so people are saying, well, answer the question. Should I masturbate or should I not? I have no idea. What is scripture? I'm conflicted. All right. Here's the answer. You ready for this? The answer is yes and no. <laughs> See, I had you on that one. You're like, yes. Here's how we're going to look at it. I say yes and no because I believe the answer is yes and no. I believe that if we keep our minds and our hearts pure, that the actual act of masturbation is not a sin. But the second that we start thinking about other people, watching pornography and, and, and putting all sorts of images into our head that we take in to our hearts, I believe then it becomes a sin. Remember Matthew 5, 28, right? As a man lusts after her in his heart, he has already committed adultery and sin has entered the situation and we've crossed the line. I hear a lot of great church kids go, that's no problem. I can keep my mind free and just think about how good God is. And I'm just like, you are such a liar. You're such a liar. So there is the answer to your question. When sin starts to enter that situation, it's a big deal because God loves you so much that the sin has got to go. The sin's got to go to be pure in mind and in heart. He is serious about sin. In fact, this is what he says in Matthew 18, 8 and 9. If your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better to enter maimed and crippled than to have two feet and be thrown in the eternal lake of fire. Now the question is, does he mean this literally? And if he really literally meant it, we would be right now surrounded in a sea of people with no hands. Here's the thing. God's really serious about sin, our disobedience from his word, because that pulls us further away. And he knows where it lands. And so tonight, I know that we've addressed so many different subjects, and I wanted to ask you to continue to text in those things. But here's what I want to encourage you into, is that, man, we're talking about the real things. I mean, tonight we have addressed homosexuality, which I know hundreds and hundreds are struggling with, uh, masturbation, pornography, sexting, thousands of you. And I believe that God is beginning to work in your own lives, in your own heart right now. And my prayer for you is this. Know no matter what situation you're in, God truly cares. And he really loves you. And my prayer for you this whole entire time is that when you hear God's standards for righteous and holy living, which is so different than what culture puts out there, that you would say, God, I'll say nothing is off limits with your word in living a righteous and holy and pure life. Because with everything I do, I want to choose to honor you. Your campus pastor is fixing to come up. And my encouragement is during your prayer time, I know we've joked and laughed, but here's what I know. Those subjects affect almost every single person in one way, shape, or form. I want to encourage you to be honest. 
find accountability, find people to speak into your life that can radically change things. We can get in here and we can laugh and talk about truth and what it is, but truth lived out will absolutely change your entire life. There is nothing that is going on that you can't get over, and there's nothing that you can do that can separate you from the love that God has for you. He has called you to be set free. It's time for us to put our foot in the sand, draw a line, and say, God, I'm going to honor you. Nothing is off limits. My life is completely, totally yours. Everything from my heart into my mind to what I think about Campus pastors, please lead them in.